and enjoy the excitement on today's episode of Red Wall. These are candied nuts, and I know that they like these at Red Wall. So we have a couple of different kinds of candied nuts here. Who'd like to try some candied nuts? Who knows what kind of nuts these are? Almonds. Almonds. I understand these are very delicious. Who'd like to try some candied almonds? This, I thought, looked very, so like something Matthias would like. Because it has seeds. I thought it was a very mouse-like looking candy. The food at Redwall is basically vegetarian. I can't help wondering, don't you um, eat mice? <laughs> Nothing personal, dear boy. I gave that all up years ago. Vegetarian these days, not like that mouse-gobbling ruffian, Snow. They do eat a fish just now and again, like in Redwall when Matthias catches the grayling, him and brother Alf, and Friar Hugo creates grayling a la Redwall, which is beautiful for them. I myself, I like the good basic stuff. You know, you could sit down with a, with a big spoon, a ladle, and a wooden bowl, like the moles, deeper than ever turnip and tater and beetroot pie. If I lived in Redwall, I would like to eat candied nuts. If I lived in Redwall, my favorite food would be oat cakes. Mmm. If I was with Dice, I would eat candy nuts. Warbeak! I think Warbeak decided to help Matthias because Matthias was being nice to her and he let her go, and he thought she was a good friend. At one point in the story, Matthias actually finds what he thinks is an, an enemy, a little injured sparrow. But gradually, on their journey through the abbey, right up to the sparrow kingdom, at the top of the abbey and the rafters, Matthias and this little sparrow, whose name is Warby, become great friends because they're like two little kids together, the pals. And they make friends, they help each other, you see? Because it's nice to have pals, isn't it? To make friends and to help each other. And that's the way Matthias and Warbeak are. I think Warbeak is funny and kind of squirmy and annoying. He befriends M Matthias and they have a long-lasting friendship. <laughs> How did you come up with the funny Sparrow characters? Oh, the Sparrow. Ah, yeah, well, I was writing in my garden one afternoon. And it was a particularly nice, warm, sunny afternoon. It was in the British summer, which lasts one weekend. And um, I was dozing off, actually, in the chair. And these Sparrows came along. And I started to watch them. And I thought, what interesting little birds. Because all they were doing was fighting and arguing and shouting at each other. And I began to watch them. And I could realize these little creatures were actually talking to each other. Get off that! <laughs> and very sharp, little, very sharp and size of a little speech head. Yes, yes, no, no, and fly around. And I thought, that's wonderful, that. Now, sparrow, yeah, sparrow, sparrow, sounded better, sounded more rapid. They're like little machine guns, the way they talk. And so I decided to have some sparrows as character and give them this little language. I thought it turned out rather well. Did you? 